The only thing I have to say for this intro is holy cow. Somehow, after trying great scissors, OP incantations, and the all-powerful pistols, a great axe has become my favorite item in Sultan Sanctuary. How, you might ask? Well, let me tell you the story. This is the Sultan Sanctuary Great Axe Only Run. Unfortunately, at the start of this run, it's already not possible. At least as far as I know, there's no way to get a great axe without at least defeating one boss. So sorry, run's over. Everybody go home. The second best option is always co-op. If we create a Doug character and make our way to the Kraken Cyclops, we can get absolutely stomped by him. And then after doing that a few times, we eventually defeat him for the green key. Take this behind the false jester where we can grab the vertigo brand. Use it there to go above the jester NPC in the dark tunnels and you can find the bronze key. Luckily, there's a way back to the surface from here where we can use a stone cell sword to summon another character. Oh yeah, you kind of need to make him first, don't you? Our new character is going to be named Big Chop because it's the most accurate. Popper class, since nothing has any major stats we need, the grasping ring for more salt early on, and then we can quit out to go back to our dud build. Summon Big Chop from the cell sword and make our way to the front of the Castle of Storms. Up a ladder, we can unlock this door to grab the outlaw great axe inside. Nice, now we actually have our weapon for the run and we can go stick with Big Chop for the foreseeable future. Whatever creed you want to go with is fine as it's not going to stick very long. An extra heal can't hurt for getting us through the next few areas and let's do some hunting. Bandage ring is a must but you already knew that. Skip past sod and night since we can't even fight yet. Pick up the three locks of hair for weapon upgrades. Blacksmith gloves equals more strength so yes please. Wrapped link helps us dodge faster can't say no to that. Fused metal ring might actually be really helpful with this massive weapon I'm already holding. And lastly we collect a mossy charm to attack faster that's an obvious choice for me. Finally, we can level into Class 1 Great Axe, letting us use this Executioner's Blade. Through the woods, we collect a Soldier's Poem, the Bright Coral Ring, because stamina is everything. Level into three more stamina for the same reason, and ta-da, it's now time to fight our first boss. Kraken Cyclops is the target as he's going to give us access to the castle. The idea of this run is to rush our main weapon, which is not the most basic Great Axe in the game. No, we want a more sophisticated option. To try it out on as many bosses as possible, we're getting straight to the point. Don't worry, we'll come back for those other bosses later on. Trust me, the payoff will be worth it. Big Boy here was a little harder than he needed to be because I kind of forgot to use my weapon upgrades. But the speed, stagger, and overall damage look kind of good for this being the fourth boss in the game. More than anything, it was a test of stopping my trigger finger. One attack at a time is perfectly fine, no need to overdo it and get smacked across the arena. With the first boss finally being down, we can level the axe up to level 3, grab 4 points in strength, and snatch class 2 great axes as well. If we quickly make our way past the Jester for some deja vu, we acquire the Vertigo brand on this character before making our way to the Castle of Storms. Somehow I always seem to forget that this ledge here contains three soldiers poems. Great Axe level 4, don't mind if I do. The Kraken Worm was largely uneventful. Even without any buffs at all, we do amazing damage. Right now, basic melee attacks are the most efficient, which to be honest, that lets me jump or dodge roll when I need to, avoiding damage easily. The weight of my hefty friend is substantial, although stagger every three or so hits, balances out the scales. Another boss down. Now acquiring the Shadow Flip brand, I decided to avoid mistakes I've made in the past by simply throwing points into stamina. The more green stuff I have, the easier the game gets. If you're paying attention, you probably know what happened next. Just a little executing through the dark red halls leads me to the illustrious House of Splendor. Here, we can join this new creed for the raw power to come. Plus four in strength from the loads of salt you find getting here. Then without any farming at all, we can turn in skull bat ashes, drowned soldiers ears, and ember skull ashes to our creed leader. In return, we can select three golden wine buffs for a massive boost of defense and damage. Sadly, this will poison us if we heal too quickly, but a simple man with a simple axe just wants to do more damage. Is that a crime? Our first obstacle with this newfound power is the Untouched Inquisitor. Okay, good thing we decided to get the buff because that damage does not look impressive at all. The jumping attack must be a tad weaker as closer to the ground to see somewhat normal results. Thankfully, my stagger potential is more than solid, stopping any messy attacks before they connect. And you already know I had to finish it off with a slam down for the flourish. It really is the simple things in life, you know? Oh, and there's also a nice and easy Lord's Order pickup here that somehow I always forget about. How? I may never know. Let's grab two additional heals and plus four strength, since the next boss isn't known to be a pushover. 
With my great axe now at level 5, we can scale the golden dome to find the monstrous third lamb. Golden wine really boosts up my defense, so this lightning here doesn't hardly scratch at all. On top of that, I found the light, light, heavy combo to be very reliable here. The attacks were fast enough to hit in succession and did just enough stagger every time. Consider that the third lamb takes a large break when charging out lightning. Well, that's kind of the perfect opportunity to strike. One of my biggest obstacles in the past has since become a nice, easy battle. I think once you learn to not roll into him when he claw attacks, that changes everything. Closer and closer, we get to our goal. Almost there, boys. Now, after acquiring the hard light brand, we can scale the blue paths to reach new destinations. How about plus seven in strength? Heck yeah, that's gonna feel real nice here soon. The Drag King is always funny with weapons like this. I have high damage, high stagger, and good reach. He doesn't move at all, gets staggered and closer to two hits, and barely manages to attack at all. At this point, I'm just beating down an old man, which I guess if boxing has taught me anything this year, it's that fighting an old man is the best way to go pro. Besides that, the bony fellow tried to fry me near the end, and instead got executed for his transgressions. With the dart brand now in hand, we have the best brands needed to crush Salton Sanctuary. Three points in stamina and only one more obstacle left to go. Over Pitchwoods is a secret path you can take using our new dart brand. Scaling the dangerous rafters above and slowly making our way over the deadly spindle beasts, we can already reach the lower lake sanctuary. Only five bosses down and we're already at the end game point. Sultan Sanctuary is kind of funny in that way. Instead of facing the witch, however, we're here for more apparition based opponents, those being the coveted. With our slash damage being weaker here, let's go ahead and talk about a few things. There are actually several different great axes in this game. The final option you could acquire is the Castaway's Great Axe, though it's also trapped in the Ziggurat where I usually tend to avoid. The Class 4 option is called the Coveted. Can you guess where it comes from? Yeah, you can quite literally beat down an axe as a boss, then go use it afterwards, which definitely sounds like the coolest option to me. And with this specific path, you don't even need to defeat that many bosses to get here. So after a very easy yet unsurprisingly lengthy battle, I acquire the Ghostly Ashes and set off to reap my rewards. Except crap, I completely forgot to check the upgrade material and this requires a shimmering pearl. No, that's only in the end game. But also at the same time, I didn't forget to check that. We just need to make one more pit stop. You thought I didn't double check before starting this run. Come on, what is this amateur hour? Making a quick stop through the lower section of Pitchwoods, I can snatch up three Lord's Orders for a level 6 upgrade. Oddly enough, the large brute in Mao's castle decided to drop a King's Orders on the first try, so hey, a fully upgraded axe isn't something I'm gonna complain about. Now time for Mal herself. Not much I haven't seen before if I'm being honest. She doesn't instantly roll over, and her magic does send me flying. Thankfully though, the devs gave me this incredible golden wine that turns my low armored self into a complete tank. Heavy attacks are still not optimal, although I should have figured that, although they aren't too difficult to pull off with decent timing. That I don't usually have. Down below the left side of this boss arena is a chest containing a single shimmering pearl, one of the hardest upgrade materials to get just up here being guarded by Mal. Then, of course, the one thing I really didn't plan for is my lack of salt. I need to farm out 100,000 for this upgrade, and let me tell you, that is no picnic. The massive brute here in Mao's castle can drop about 5,500 every run, but he does take several hits to defeat. And man, does he hit like a truck. We are going to be here for a while. Guess I'll see you guys in a few. Around 20 minutes later, we can now transmute into our coveted Great Axe, which deals equal amount slash and strike damage. So that's a nice surprise that should make this run a breeze. But ah crap, I can't wield it. Seems I forgot to get class 5 Great Axes. Just a little allocating of points with Grey Pearls, and ta-da, we are wielding the coveted boss as our new weapon. It's heavy and slow, but I can't wait to see what it's able to do. Before that, however, let's take a little trip down into the dark. Off to the right side of the Siam Lake Sanctuary, you can drop down some platforms following a water trail. At the bottom is a very scary jump you need to make onto a hidden platform, and it seems I can't quite remember where it's at, as I've now died eight times trying this. They do say ninth time is the charm. At least I think they do. Thankfully, I finally managed to jump over to that small ledge. Inside the lone chest here is a drowned tome, the item I need in order to max out my new coveted great axe. Then back at my creed's leader, I turned in three whisperman ashes for a cleansing cloth. This item can get rid of the alcoholic poison buildup from golden wine. Doesn't hurt to have, just in case. Oh, and I, uh, I won't hit the sodden knight. After all this, I was able to go back and single heavy chop the poor fellow. Lights out for you, buddy. Time to see what else we can do with this beastly weapon. So what you may soon notice is that this axe became my new favorite weapon. I didn't really understand why at first, but I was deleting every single boss I went up against in just two hits. 
Three hits. The game was nothing at this point. Well, I thought Great Scissors were the best weapons, but after trying the Coveted Great Axe, maybe that isn't entirely the case. Well, the reason for this item's immeasurable power is kind of simple. First off, the thing is a heavy hitter, meaning that the heavy attacks are not quick at all, but will do massive damage on every hit. Then you have the Golden Wine, which clearly is the best tool to pair this with. Not only do you deal far more damage, but your slower swings are not that bad when defenses prevent you from dying, really at all. And then finally, we have that split damage. The Coveted it has half and half of both strike and slash. I'm not really sure how many weapons in the game have this. Honestly, this may be the only one, if not one of the very few. Get this guy and no boss has any decent defenses against you, is what I'm trying to say. You also have to remember this is a pure strength weapon, so two-handing it means we don't even need that high of stats to get the most damage. I expected this to do damage, but completely break the game? Nah, that was just an added bonus. So if you've been counting, that's Queen of Smiles in two hits, Mad Alchemist in two hits, False Jester in three hits barely, Bloodless Prince taken down getting those gorgeous chunks of yellow damage. Karsh Jaw was pretty stubborn, hitting me every time I attacked, but also like six hits in total was all I needed, so that wasn't really hard to heal through at all. Bosses were just laying down left and right, and it was quite the sight to see. Witch of the Lake was the first boss to actually take me down, which honestly I'm not surprised. On the second try though, I took things much slower and waited her attacks out. Spamming the magic balls gave me free jump attacks, and although she tried her best to cut me down in the end, I did manage to land the final blow. A slow weapon against a fast and agile magic user. This went about as expected, and rightfully so. Before moving ahead, we still have a couple loose ends to tie up. Tree of Men was a breeze compared to usual. Each man gets one-shotted by a chop, and then I skip both second and third phases of the fight by switching swinging three times up by his head. Also, the fall attack in this arena is peak gameplay, you can't convince me otherwise. Disemboweled Husk was way more resilient than most, mainly because he would not stop spraying bullets up into the air, really slowed down the cool speed kills that I was getting. And in general, I felt the damage here was just okay comparatively. Holy damage really is the best way to go with this undead fellow. Substitutes just don't even compete. After then making my way through the treacherous swamp, the stench most foul kind of fell over. Each little mouth summoned dies instantly, and in a mere seven attacks consisting of jumps or pure heavies, he said see ya and gave up. This is getting ridiculous, man. Who knew a literal boss would turn into such a good weapon? Here I decided to swap out for the Mossy Ring. Extra stamina regen is always great. With the Redshift brand and plus five in endurance, it's time to cut down the final few bosses. Ronin Cran once again decided he'd rather be AFK than even face me, so after a few combo attacks, he went down without any complications. Poor guy gets the same buffs from Golden Wine that I do, and yet somehow that makes him brain dead. Tough luck, I guess. The unskinned was really fun, as I was able to annihilate the mage very quickly. Typically, I do go for the brute first, but if heavy attacks are going to be bringing her down this quickly, I'm more than happy to get rid of that pesky magic. I really am a big fan of this spin attack. That's the heavy attack, if you don't know, but for whatever reason, it hits all the way around you. Makes any misclicks you happen to activate still do damage most of the time. The Brute tried to avoid me, but in the end he was nothing but a footnote. I decided to battle the Forgotten King before the Dragon just because the runback is a bit more trouble than I would like. No hitting this fight is really tough, as I have trouble just avoiding the smallest magic damage. Though a mere three attacks from the mage was one of the better starts you could have. Because the king is so fast, I definitely got caught several times. Super slow overhead swings do not match up against instant kicks to the face. Then of course the knight goes down right after, as a 1v1 at this point is hardly fair. Our boy the Kraken Dragon also takes amazing damage from this beheading axe of destruction. Now the breath attack is not easy to avoid here as you can't stay in the air very long, but jump over it only taking bits of damage, it lets you retaliate quickly. Golden Wine tends to make me dodge a little bit worse than I probably should be just because you know you can take a hit. Kinda wish I could get out of that tank mentality, but then again when heavy attacks do more damage, the brain says go for it. Another win in the pocket and only a single challenge left to go. Before we head on in to face the Nameless God, let's take a look at the final stats. 42 strength, 26 endurance, 35 willpower, and we equip the sorcerer armor because I think it looks way better and I kind of forgot I grabbed it after the coveted battle. Whoops, but hey, you can't tell me this doesn't look amazing, even though I am no magic user at all. Kind of ironic, I guess. After all the easy fights and all the instant wins we've had this run, Nameless God stands as a different beast. We still have amazing damage and relying on fast normal attacks is obviously the only way to go with his quick responses. The boss is so well designed for the final opponent. He has many really solid openings for you to get in there, but don't see them and he feels impossible. Not to mention that magic barrage is wild and seemingly impossible to dodge without jumping up the wall. The only question left for us to ask is who wins between a large sword and a large axe? The answer was inevitable.
And there you have Salt and Sanctuary, beaten using only a Great Axe. I had this run in my pocket for a while and only now got around to making the video. Honestly, it was my easiest win yet, since you have access to both sources of melee damage. Normal Great Axes, I feel those still lose out to Great Scissors and Magic. The Coveted, on the other hand, this is a weapon to always consider. It really brings down pain upon those other bosses. You do have to get used to the slower swing speed, but then again you also don't, because basic enemies die in sometimes less than two hits definitely pick this up and give it a go sometime. You will not be disappointed. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more runs like this in the future, be sure to hit that like button down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.